Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. learners welcome back to the art room it's me mrs reed Wright. this week we're talking all about the alphabet and art and today is letter n and letter n stands for night and we're seeing an artist that we studied for a whole week a while back and that's georgia o'keefe when we studied her flowers and how she went off to hawaii and painted flowers and leaves well, it's her, but she's doing one that she saw in the desert when she lived there. And it was in 1917. It's called Starlight Night. And it's a very simple piece of art, but I thought it was beautiful and kind of fun to mix the colors. So I hope you're ready to go. Let's take a look at our song of the ABCs of art. A, B, C, D, E of art. That's the way that we will start. K is for kitchen, lobster starts with L. M is for mother, we can tell. N is for night, ocean starts with O. Art and the alphabet, here we go. So here it is, N is for night. O'Keefe's painted night with stars that are bright. We crawl into bed and we say, night bright night ready bright night they both say it rhyming words they both end with it bright it it night it it let's look at the painting this is the night sky as she saw it below it's very 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 dark blue almost black it's a color they call indigo indigo and then this is the sky and these aren't the kind of stars you might have seen but this is the way she saw the stars and decided to paint them so she put them really in rows it looks like an array you might see when you're in math where everything is in a grid straight down and straight across if that's how you would like to do after being inspired by georgia o'keefe you do that. I plan to do it as much as I can because it's going to be hard to see where the white will go on white paper, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. So we're going to look, and here she is, Georgia O'Keeffe. This was when she was later in her painting life. She painted things like flowers and landscapes. For a while she lived in New York and she painted buildings. For a while she lived in the desert and she would find old bones and paint bones. And that's our girl, Georgia O'Keeffe. All right, let me set my things aside and get started on our starlit night. Put that here and get my table. I'm using a great big white crayon. You could use your white pastel. And you know why I'm using those is because when I paint over it with watered down paint, my paints are so good that they really will cover over it, and I don't want that to happen. So I have to use um, a really a press hard with my crayon. And this one I've had for a long time, but I haven't used it very much. One time I bought a box of white crayons, just white ones, and so I had a lot of white crayons. But I brought my pastels, my little broken pastels, in a bag in case I decided to do that. And you may not have white pastels or a white crayon at all. And if you do that, then just paint around the outside or draw around the outside of where you think your stars will go. But what I'm going to do, and oh, I could even use my straw as my straight edge. I can go across. So I want my stars to be maybe, I'm going to put a pencil mark for mine right now. And then the others below it, I won't. I'm kind of trying to do it where they're kind of spaced out. That's good. Now. I'll get my crayon and press hard and do a star. And they really are just like rectangles or shapes. So they don't have, I'm not drawing a, around the outside like normally I would draw around the outside and fill it in. No, I'm just coloring it. Color a star, 
color a star, color a star. Now I'm going to put my finger here and just go below that. A star, a star. And they might be jiggy jaggy because I'm not looking. I can't tell where the crayon really is on here. So that's probably what's happening to you. She has one, two, three, four, five, six. She has many rows. I'm not going to go down very far because I want to make that really blackish blue indigo ground and then paint this different colors as I go up. Maybe I'll put one more row. Let me move my pastels out of the way. One more row. And I think I better put a little newspaper on my table when it comes time to paint because I'm going to want to go all the way to the edge. Oh, and I put it way back over there. Can I reach it? Just one minute, boys and girls. Let me set this down. I'm going to reach back there and get it. Excuse me, please, for scooting across the room to get it. Oh, you get to see me do an arabesque like a dancer from Degas. Put this on here. OK. Now I'm ready to paint. Tap, tap, tap. Fold this under so it doesn't make a bunch of noise while we're trying to work. All right, I have my little thing of water. I brought out a little lid in case I wanted to mix any paints that I didn't have exactly. Now to make that dark, dark, dark blue, I am going to mix it up in this lid because I'm going to need quite a bit. So I'm going to put some water in my lid. You could use a paper plate. You could use your pie pan that we've been using. I'm going to put, since I'm making a shade, I start out with the color. If I was making a tint, I would start out with white. But I'm making a shade, so I start out with the hue or color. So I'm putting my darkest blue I have. And how can I make this even darker, boys and girls? Are you calling out the color you think? You are right. I need to put some black. And I have black in here that's all dried up in my egg carton. So I just put it in there. Oh, yeah, that's making a good indigo. I'm going to get more black. And is it going to make it a good indigo? Yes, it is. I'm going to do the ground with this one. And then I will do the night sky with a variety of blues. Now I have to get this blue paint mixed up because this one doesn't have to go over the white stars, so it can just be painted. Now she just did this, went to the bottom and made the ground. And hers was kind of an oval on the bottom. I'm doing mine kind of like hers. Sometimes I'm inspired by the artist, and sometimes I just want to copy them because I like it so much. So I go down there. Do I want that little stripe of dark there? Maybe not. And you know what I could do is let this dry and go over it again and make it even darker. So I'm looking at this one, and now I want to make it watery. And I might even use my colored pencil to decide where I'm going to do some other watercolor. So I like these watercolor colors to come up here. And I'm going to get rid of this dark blue in case I want to paint it again. I'll set these aside and get my more watered down paints up here by the stars. All right. And you know these are the ones that I put into the lid to make my color. And I'm going to add a little purple to that to make it a little darker. But I need a lot of water so that we're really not stick to the white crayon. There we go. That looks pretty good. So I can start at the top. And she made a white rim and purple rim around the edge, and I think I want to do that. Do you notice? I really did a good job of doing my um, crayon mark because it's not sticking to it. And then I'm going to go here. There's my whole row, first row of stars. I could go in here and make it a little darker, maybe as it goes down. Dabbing it in my paints. I like to have a lot of water because I want it to stay away from the stars. All right, there we go. 
and I'll mix it with this. Oh yeah, see while it's still wet, it mixes with it. And I got a little purpley blue on there. I like how that looks. Stay away from the edge because I want to do some um, magenta around the edge, kind of like she did. And on hers, it goes from darkest at the top to lightest at the bottom, but I'm not doing exactly like hers, even though I do like it a lot. Go here, and it's staying away from my stars. And maybe I'll add a little more purple to this one. Get it in there. Go across, and that looks good too. And did she make it touch? No, she left a little white in between the bottom of the stars and where the ground is. And I think I'll make it a little lighter blue and add a little more water to this lid. I leave my colors in the lid of my, my um, watercolors. Some people wash theirs out. And if your teacher likes that, then that's what you'll do. But when I was an art teacher, I let children have their own paint box so that they could do what they wanted. Did they want to make um, their lid always have a little paint left over? Maybe they mixed a color that they loved and they didn't want to lose the base of it. So I said, just leave it there. That's yours. You keep it. I really think this one needs to be a little darker. So I think I'm going to see what this color looks like. Oh, I like that pretty much. So I think I'll add a little of it. Oh, yeah. I think that's good. I'll mix it right on top of that blue and get it a mixture. And I'll dip in that navy blue and get it over here. Oh, I think I like it. OK, this is going to get a little more on here. And I'll put this around here, because I still need to add my magenta or pink around the edge, or red violet, or whatever you've decided to do around your edge. Because she did that, it was like the light was coming up from the next day and mixing in on the edges and lighting up her sky. So let me put this over here, find a brush that isn't so murky, and get into my magenta and make some water for it. Yeah, and I'll show you. I won't be able to finish it right now, I don't think, because it looks like it's getting time to go. I want to say goodbye and tell you about tomorrow, because tomorrow we're doing the ocean. There's a man who uh, was a painter in the 1600s, I think. I'll have to look at his information for tomorrow. But he painted the great wave in Japan. And it's such a giant wave. It's, if you haven't seen it, you're going to be so surprised, because it's swallowing up some boats. All right, it's time to say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. I will see you tomorrow with white paper, peach paper. Bring it. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good.